Today's gadget is this uh, Sprinter OBD2 uh, breakout box. Um, I'm going to be discussing why I think it's a very good choice for the do-it-yourself mechanic. I'm going to be talking about the uh, other pieces of hardware that you would need to go along with this to be able to do CAN bus diagnostics. You'll be led to diagnose the CAN bus if you get those pesky U uh, communication codes. Uh, at best, but you, at worst, you're going to have uh, perhaps a no start or a no communication with the scan tool on the data link uh, connector. First, why I think that this is a good choice was well, $25. And uh, some of the fancier breakout boxes will run you maybe 300 bucks. And the do-it-yourself mechanic's not going to go and reach for this very often. It's not going to get used that often. Um, I also like that this is simple. The other ones are uh, fancier. They got LED and self-test um, uh, modes. Um, I think I like to have something simple between me and the complex thing that I'm trying to diagnose. I like the layout better. Uh, the other boxes are uh, set out in uh, maybe three rows or four rows, while this one is just two rows. And it uh, mirrors the uh, data link connector. It's more intuitive. So what else do you need to go along with this breakout box to get the job done? So I recommend a couple of BNC cables. They go BNC to male banana plug. That particular style of uh, male banana plug is the best. It's the most positive connection in, in there. Uh, there's a style that is a swivel barrel. They're no good. And I know that because these um, cables came with that. And then I bought separately these uh, good style of male banana plugs and I've changed them all on my cables. This is my HT6022BE. It has a native 0 to 5 uh, volt uh, input, which is just excellent for this. And um, the um, sample rate is also uh, pretty decent. It's, it's a good um, oscilloscope for CAN bus uh, work. You're also going to want a couple of uh, male banana plugs to male banana plugs, again, with a good style male uh, plugs for your voltmeter. So the way I want to approach this is to uh, show you a good working CAN bus waveform and also show you some of the other measurements that you would take um, that would be within the parameters you expect and then discuss uh, what kind of plans of action you would take if you don't get this waveform or those uh, measurements that you're looking for. The CAN bus protocol was adopted in 2008. So um, this particular chart that I got off of Wikipedia will apply to uh, pretty much all the vehicles and knowing what these pinouts mean. I'm interested in the uh, high speed uh, CAN uh, which will be found on pin number 6 and 14. 6 is the uh, CAN high and 14 is a CAN low. Notice uh, what I meant about being intuitive. These two on this uh, breakout box are one above the other. The same goes with uh, pins number 3 and 11, which on this vehicle happen to be uh, the medium or low speed bus you'll get the same kind of waveforms on the uh, low speed bus as you will on the high speed bus. All right, so uh, the key is on, uh, engine's not running, but the bus is communicating. And um, I've got H-scope running here. So uh, the, this has the ability of recording a couple of minutes of uh, data. I'll, I'll do just a few seconds. I'll explain to you while this is recording exactly what it is that we're kind of looking for. So you have to visualize this uh, like a five volt system and the two and a half volt line is like the center line. And the can high is pulled up one volt off of that to three and a half, back and forth between two and a half and three and a half. You're looking for that. The can low is gonna go from two and a half and pull down to one and a half, back to two and a half, down to one and a half. 
these two should mirror each other about that two and a half inch bolt line. They should mirror each other. That's what you're looking for on here. Let's have a look. Zoom. Zoom some more. There we go. It's going to look like that. And notice how it does mirror it about the two and a half volt center line. That's a good waveform. And you have the ability to scroll and see if there were any errors, you know, over that time frame. There's 17 seconds of recording here and you can, uh, you have a chance to, to examine it. And I don't see any errors and I know that this CAN bus is good. So what if you're not seeing uh, this clean mirror image waveform? Uh, what then? Um, one of the things you can do is you can uh, unplug um, a module off of the CAN bus and uh, see if your signal cleans up. And if you plug that back in, it's muddled, you unplug that module, the suspect module. Uh, sometimes the code might get, lead you in the right direction as to which module is, gonna, is giving you this kind of problem. And if the rest of the CAN bus is, uh, gives you a clean waveform with that module unplugged, you know where to concentrate your efforts. Uh, word of caution, when you're under the hood and you're plugging and unplugging anything on the CAN bus, any of these modules, they're, they're very expensive. Uh, the switch must be off before you plug and unplug any module. Another word of caution, if you're back probing, which uh, you may end up having to do in your diagnostics, I'm not a fan of these little T-pins and alligator clips on them when it has to do with the CAN bus. Uh, there's too much, uh, a lot of times you'll find that you're uh, trying to probe uh, very close uh, together and the risk of these two things uh, shorting together is quite great. It's much safer to have these acupuncture type uh, probes that connect uh, to a banana plug and even if they're in close proximity and they happen to come together, these plastic things here will keep them apart. You're going to need a, a wiring diagram for your vehicle that uh, shows the uh, connections of all these modules on the CAN bus. Um, BBB Industries is a good uh, resource for do-it-yourself mechanics to get uh, download these uh, diagrams, print them out. All of the modules on the CAN bus network are connected together through uh, twisted pair wires. These wires are terminated with 120 ohm resistor at each end. If you take a resistance measurement across pins number 14 and number six on the high speed CAN bus with an ohm meter, you should be able to read not 120 ohms, but half of that because being in parallel, you divide. So the number you're looking for when you take that measurement is 60 ohm for a healthy system. Otherwise, you, something's not connected right, or the resistors are uh, faulty or, or missing. Um, that's what you're going to be looking for. To be able to take the measurement, the key has to be off, and you have to give a certain amount of time for the modules to go to rest. Uh, that was one of the advantages of having the breakout box uh, coming out of the window here like this. It was easier for me to do this video, of course but it also prevented me from having to open and close the door, um, which would have just woken up these modules again and we start back at zero. So you're looking for 60 ohm across pins uh, six and 14. If you have a um, no start or no communication with your scan tool, um, pin number 16 to ground, you should be getting uh, battery voltage on that with your multimeter. So that pretty much covers the basics of the CAN bus. And uh, as far as a do-it-yourself mechanic would be concerned, if you're um, the kind of guy that's uh, analytical and uh, you're not too heavy-handed, uh, respectful of how delicate and expensive these modules are, uh, there's no reason why you can't uh, roll up your sleeves and uh, there's not a, a whole big investment in uh, 
these tools here to be able to diagnose on your own uh, a CAN bus network. That's it. Take care, guys.